What's going on, movie fans? Welcome to Movie Rounders Live, and tonight we will be talking about Christopher Nolan. We'll do his whole bracket. We're also going to be talking about movies that we just saw, Tenet and Bill and Ted Face the Music. I'm Matthew, Tony, Bethany, and Daniel here to bring you all of tonight's action. Y'all, don't forget to leave us the comments over there because we're going to use that an awful lot tonight, and we always love when we get the first comment because then we know the comments are working. So uh, yeah. <laughs> don't forget to drop those comments over there so we know that that is good to go. And we just wanted to say hello to everybody. And it was so good to be back in the movie theater. Tony, Daniel, did you enjoy being back in the movie theater? Loved it. All right. I, I think it was a bad weekend to go back, but I loved going. <laughs> All right. I don't know so, the uh, feeling. <laughs> Yes, Bethany didn't make it back in, but we're going to get her back in. We're going to rope her back into the theater. We're so we're going to launch into a, our first topic here. And uh, first topic is going to be, we saw Bill and Ted face the music. All of us saw it. So we're going to talk about what we thought about it. We're going to start with Daniel. Daniel, you got the background back there. Tell us what you <laughs> felt about Bill and Ted face the music. I love it. I love it when Keanu does this movie. He says, yeah, right. <laughs> I, don't know, but I love this movie because I, I love all of the Bill and Ted movies. To me, it's kind of that surfer, you know, sort of, you know, stoner type comment. Not really stoner, but like more surfer kind of, you know, hey, dude, just relax type <clears throat> personalities. And I, I love these movies and they're a lot of fun. Uh, I, I just think that like this is the movie that needed to happen. Like they needed to answer those questions. They needed to do the things that they've been touting in the last two or three movies. And this movie answered all those questions. It was funny. Like I laughed my head off. I mean, like the first 10 minutes of the movie, I was like rolling and I, I didn't stop laughing through the whole thing. I know that comedy is not really for everybody, but for me, I had a blast. I had a lot of fun. I think if you see this movie, you enjoy it, especially if you love the other movies. And I love the other movies, so I had a great time. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, Bethany, what did you think of Bill and Ted Face the Music? Mm -hmm. Well, I've never seen the other ones. There's two that came before it. We've mentioned this before. Um, I, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, for it, having no idea really what the franchise really is besides its music and time travel type stuff. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, it's it has its niche group of fans that'll probably like it a lot more than me. You can definitely tell who it's marketed to. Um, it, I mean, it, it does help if you've seen the other two, but you can pick up on it pretty well. Uh, the two actresses they had playing their daughters, Samara Weaving, and I do not know the other one's name. Apologies to her. Uh, they were great. Uh, you could definitely tell they had the same vibe as 90s um, Keanu and the other guy's name. I don't know anyone's names. I don't watch movies. I don't know anyone's names. That's just my shtick. Uh, yeah, it's, it was funny. I mean... I feel like if you knew the franchise, you would have found it funnier. But it was still, it was good for a few laughs. Um, I was a little surprised by how yeah. not serious it took itself. But I guess it just also makes sense considering the type of movie that it is. Um, yeah, it, it was, I enjoyed the actress from Glee showing up in there as one of the wives and I don't know if those are real British accents or not, but they were sure interesting. Oh. But no, I, I think it, I th it's fun. If you enjoyed the old ones, check it out. I don't really think you're missing anything, though, if um, you don't see it. So, All right. Tony, what did you think of Bill and Ted Face the Music? Oh, that's, it. Oh, that's his move. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think they had a tough type, tight road to walk for this because – we work at a college, and one of the things I asked a, a one of the a, a girl that was in the in class today, I said, "Have you seen the new Bill and Ted movie?" And she looked at me with a blank face. She'd never heard of Bill. <laughs> <and Ted. laughs> so you've yeah. got this issue where my age saw it when we were young in college, yeah, and it was funny when you were young in college. And now we've come how many years forward? A couple decades. <laughs> and then the people that are familiar with this 
are a lot older. So you have to know that you're going to get the nostalgic crowd that's going to come back and watch this because they remember that humor. But that humor isn't quite as funny as it was when you're in college. And then you got a college crowd who's never heard of them. So they're coming in cold and don't know any of the concepts. And a lot of the, a lot of the gags and the funny parts really relied on you knowing a little bit about the past. And if you didn't really know the past movies, I think it would have probably been a little confusing. So it was, it was, I mean, we had two time travel movies that came out this weekend and it's pretty sad when Bill and Ted beat the other one. So we're going to, no. we're going to get into the, we're going to get into that later, but it's like, it's Spicy. one of those movies where it wasn't amazing, but it could have been a lot worse. So I, I kind of fall in the middle, you know, it's, if I didn't have to go to the theaters, I'd probably wait and rent it and probably watch it. And, you know, it's good. There are certain scenes in it that are, are really funny. And then there's some other cringe moments where they're, they're, they're trying to act like their older selves. And the funny thing is the two daughters, the two girls that portray that they do a better job of acting like them than they did. Which yeah. Is you could definitely tell like, um, like they, they really fit the roles. I don't know how much they studied them or anything like that, but oh, those two, okay. they were, they really stole the show. And I think that was the point of the movie really, um, oh. you know, with the ending, not to spoil anything. Uh, so I won't say, but um, was to kind of introduce them. And I guess if they wanted to continue the franchise, you could take it off with the two daughters, uh, Thea and Billy, I think were yeah. their names. Yeah. And uh, they were great. You could, you definitely tell that they had embodied like the original versions of those characters when they were yeah. young, like teenagers or the like, twenties. I guess is yeah. I don't know how that how old their characters supposed to be in the original movie, but yeah, the one that played Keanu's daughter, she, I mean, she had to the study. voice. She, she sounded like a surfer. Yeah. I know, she nailed yeah. his character. So it. So, but there are some funny parts with, with a robot that's a new character in the scene that had yeah. some, that kind of catches you off guard that was kind of funny. But <laughs> it's one of those where you could take it or leave. If you're, if you're feeling like you need something for a laugh and you remember the old ones and you want to go in for something nostalgic, maybe it uh, might be worth seeing. All righty. So, uh, don't you, y'all don't forget to put comments over here so we know you're here. Do you guys still only see two comments? I just wanted to make uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I just want to make sure I wasn't behind on them. So, yeah, y'all comment. Let us know that you're here. Uh, yeah, Bill and Ted face the music. Um, it wasn't, I guess, necessary to, uh, to do a sequel to this. I mean, Keanu Reeves is pretty established after coming back and doing all the John Wick movies after being off for a while. And I don't think Alex Winter really did much of anything after the Bill and Ted movies. Um, the first ones were just kick, kick back, turn your brain off, have a good time. And that's pretty much what this one was. It was just turn your brain off, laugh have a good time. Uh, the jokes are still there. It's hard to watch Keanu try to bring back his surfer guy image. Uh, cause he's just not that kind of actor anymore. He kind of fell flat a little bit to me in this movie, just because like I said, it was weird seeing him try to pull that off again. Um, the, uh, the cast was really good. Uh, their daughters, uh, were perfectly cast spot on, uh, Samara weaving reminds me of Bethany, uh, down here. They, <laughs> Wearing the overalls, blonde hair, they they seemed almost the same. I love um, Samara Weaving, see, so I appreciate that. I, I see why she loves Samara Weaving so much um, now. Uh, yeah, it was fine. Uh, the plot was fine. The time traveling was fine. They do a whole lot of good throwbacks. Kid just, Putty as like the astrophysicist, quantum yeah. physics yeah. expert was like yeah. the best thing. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll tell you, you, you were saying about Alex Winter. I mean, yeah. he pulls. It's like he never stepped away from this role. Mm -hmm. I don't think he ever did step away from the role. He just it sat there is, he was just years. like, what? Keanu, who's done a uh, hundred times more movies since then, yeah. felt uh, uncomfortably out of place. This dude, he, he nails his. Right. He, so I'd like to see more of him and some more things. You know? yeah. yeah. Totally. Dude. Um, totally. Overall, it, it, it was just that. <laughs> uh, it wasn't necessary. It looked like they had a fun time doing it. So I, I can't really give it a. A, a, a review, I guess, just because it's it's just kind of there. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not good. It's, they just I like the it. Kind of feels like the something they were just like, you know what? We want to do this, and we're gonna yeah. do it, and we're gonna have fun. You know, it's you know, it's better than some other things where they've gone back and uh, remade or not really remade, but done a sequel to something that came out 20, 30, uh 
years ago. And um, so it, it, it's better than that. It's definitely better than like where they did Baywatch, the movie after oh, the yeah. TV show from the 90s. That movie is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. This yeah. was actually fun. And um, this was actually like fun to watch. Like it genuinely was like sitting here now thinking, I'm like, oh yeah, that was actually pretty funny. The <laughs> robot assassin dude that they have is <laughs> Dwight. <laughs> I think his name was Dwight. And everything. Dennis, 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 Dennis. <laughs> it, it's, it's a lot of fun and they, ha they, do, they do some funny stuff. Uh, for real though, <laughs> Heidi, yeah. I've been dragging them on Facebook. They left me out. They're trying to kick me out of the group. Yeah, we, we tried to get her to come to the theater. She wouldn't come. I had to do adult things the next morning, like work. Okay, uh -huh. I don't want to yeah. hear it. All right, so Daniel, out of out of five movie rounders, what do you give it? Uh. I want to say a solid three. I mean, I I enjoyed it. it. It's I would almost give it a four because it's a movie that I would watch again and again just because it's fun. It's just something, you know, just kind of lighthearted and something you can enjoy. And if you know the story, you love the characters, you're going to enjoy the film. So I had a blast. All right, three. Uh, Bethany, what would you give it? Uh, I'll give it a three uh, as well. I enjoyed it. I think it's something that, you know, if you're just looking for something to watch one night and you throw it up, it's funny. You'll enjoy it. It's not hard to pick up on the uh, plot for it or the story or anything. Uh, if you've never seen the first two movies, if you're like me, you came into it blind. Uh, it's 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 enjoyable. I, uh, yeah, I give it a three. three. Tony? If we had not seen another movie, which tainted me for the whole weekend... <laughs> I would say two and a half, but I'm with you. It was fun. I'm, I'm with a three. I mean, it's fairly kid friendly. If you're looking for a laugh, it's, I, I think they followed the formula just a little too close from the last ones, which you'll get if you watch the movie. But in general, it was good. So I think a three. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with the rest of the crowd. I'll say a three as well. Like I said, it, it wasn't necessary, but I don't hate that they did it. They just had fun. And, uh, Anybody can really just enjoy it, whether you've seen mm -hmm. the first ones or not. So, all right. So that was our review of Bill and Ted Face the Music. Y'all keep these comments coming in here. She's uh, right. Yeah. You want to? You want your kids to watch the first two before they watch this? Yeah, definitely watch. I don't the know. First My two. dad said that I was watching it last night, and he's like, "You wouldn't make it past the first ten minutes of the <laughs> other ones." And I was uh, like, Ooh. It's, <laughs> it, it's very nineties. The first two. Um, yeah. I do so love a song from one of those, so maybe right. I'll check it out. So we're going to let a few more uh, few more people come in with comments before we start our bracket. We're going to go ahead and move on to the second part here of our next question. Uh, I It oh. was Counter Reeves' birthday yesterday, uh, yeah. and we watched Bill and Ted. Burgo so thought, King. Let's, let's do uh, the best Keanu Reeves movie, and I said no Matrix or John Wick franchise just because those were the easy picks. I, I only have one. Can I go first? <laughs> I wanted everybody to really think about this. So we're going to let Bethany go first. Y'all comment over there your favorite Keanu Reeves. That's not the Matrix franchise or John Wick. Let us know what you think. Bethany, what's your Or don't point? listen to Matt and do whatever you want because Matt's not in charge of anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oof. <laughs> As an overall movie? Yeah. Yeah. The movie That's like overall, one of the very yeah. few I've seen. I like him and anything he and Winona Ryder do, especially like they did a movie like two, three years ago called Siberia. And um, there was a like, they were like, are we actually married? Because apparently they had like a real priest or something that did the wedding scene in Bram Stoker's Dracula. And they were like, are we actually married? And everything so that, you know, that showed up uh, in the press like tour for that movie. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. All I can right. like my things. Like I said, Matt, I only had one movie. I can show up in here with SpongeBob Sponge on the Go that just hey. came up this year. Hey, Bram, Bram Stoker's Dracula is a good movie. It was probably Counter Reeves' worst performance ever, but it's a good movie. So I, I'll give it to you for movie wise. Tony? I forgot he was actually even in that one. So that's interesting. <laughs> 
Uh, for me, it's going to be going back to 1994, so two and a half decades ago, practically, and Sandra Bullock, Dennis Hopper, and it would be Speed. I think that was the movie that kind of put him on this action track that he went, he's on now. Uh, Dennis Hopper played a great bad guy. It had uh, Sandra Bullock in there, which was, I think, a good kind of comedy and interaction between the two. And to me, I remember back, and I'd have to go back and watch it again now, but in my memory, it was a great action flick, and it kind of cemented your head, this guy can do these kinds of movies, you know, instead of the whole surfer thing that he was starting to get typecast with. So I think that movie came out before I was born. Probably. Speed? Yeah, right. Speed. I was born in 94. It depends on yep. when it came out. Yeah. yeah. It came out in the summer. I was not alive yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'm going to pick one that you were alive for. Uh, and I'm going to go with The Replacements. It's my favorite sports movie of all time. And he plays Shane Falco, the quarterback. Uh, leads the movie. It's it's really good movie. Like I said, my favorite sports movie with Major League second in that pick. Um, love everything about it. Uh as Phil says here, he's great in hardball as well, which is another Ooh. sports movie, baseball. Um, so, yeah, The Replacements. If I'm taking away The Matrix, then, yes, The Replacements is my favorite Keanu Reeves movie. Daniel? Wait, I have another one, but Daniel, uh -oh. go ahead. Bethany has another one. Okay. I, I just found right. one. We, we would be remiss if we did not mention Point Break, who also has the most amazing Patrick Swayze performance yeah. Well, so Patrick Swayze, you got Patrick Swayze and you got Keanu Reeves, one of the best movies ever. And they're like surfing and uh, jumping out of airplanes, like surfing air. So it's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. It's a great movie. You need to see it if you haven't seen it. Uh, Bethany, you say you had another one? Uh, Street Kings, 2008. Yeah. Uh, Keanu Reeves, Forrest Whitaker, Chris Evans. He is a disillusioned alcoholic cop out in los angeles and um don't start with me tonight phil i've had a long day don't start with me okay we're, we're, we're gonna get into the, we're gonna get into that here uh here next so y'all get ready for that i like josh's comment that, that's the one i almost chose uh i love my own private by idaho it's very artsy it's a very artsy film mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah all right so those were our, our favorite Keanu Reeves. We wanted to give a shout out to him for his birthday being yesterday and for talking about <laughs> uh, Bill and Ted. And yes. Mm -hmm. uh, SpongeBob, Sponge on the go. Compliments of my wife here. Yes, yeah, SpongeBob. <laughs> so uh, as you can see from Bethany's name there, uh, we decided to do a best Christopher Nolan bracket because of a review that we're going to do coming up here in a little bit uh, that I'm sure everybody uh, – is excited for but uh let me bring it up we've got the bracket here the bracket is best christopher nolan movie now i know he obviously has more than eight movies but i left off insomnia and the first one that he did it's because they're less lesser known movies i figured uh the panel the people commenting would have seen these movies more yes i know all three batmans are in there josh you just got to go with it man um <laughs> Uh, so our first one here is going to be the dark Knight against Dunkirk. These seedings were done by IMDB. Uh, and so the dark Knight with the number one seed Dunkirk had the eighth seed coming in. So the dark Knight, Dunkirk, uh, Tony, I, I, I can't wait to see where Tony's going to go with this one. Tony. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So you took, you take what I think is one of the quintessential movies of his, against what I think one is one of the absolute worst movies of his. He almost topped it this weekend, but it's it's easy for me, Batman. All right. Tony says the Dark Knight. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't mean to hit that one. I was trying to get to uh, Josh's comment here. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Bethany, Dark Knight, Dunkirk, what do you got? Dunkirk is that movie is a Stone Cold Masterpiece, as Josh said. <laughs> The anxiety that you feel during that movie, the sh the the shooting of the movie, the characters that you get, it's great. And if you have a problem with the way the timeline works, you can't follow simple things. It's not that hard. Okay, I'm just saying. 
Dunkirk. Like, I love The Dark Knight. You're trying to set it up to fail here, Matt. You rigged this somehow. I, I went by IMDb you rankings as I do it. every you week. These brackets, Matt. I'm You're setting rigged. them up to fail. Every week I go and by IMDb. You're rigging it. <laughs> and uh, I love The Dark Knight, but I think Dunkirk as a whole is one of his uh, is probably his best movie of over, overall like i'm no it's great like that movie literally as josh's other comment over here says it mm -hmm. never slows down it just goes and goes and goes the it anxiety never, you have i was sitting there the whole time like and you couldn't rest because of that stupid ticking in the background and right. no bethany's going with dunkirk daniel dunkirk or the dark knight oh my god Okay, well, I went to sleep during Dunkirk. I'm sorry. I, have to, you know, I wish I had. If I'm going to sleep, I, it's bad for me. But anyway, so I, I can't vote for Dunkirk ever. I mean, God bless it. But nope. I'm going right. with Dark Knight. Thank you. Daniel's going Dark Knight. Um, yeah. I don't particularly like war movies. Like I said, I'm not the guy to go to for war movies. I didn't like the fact that he shot it in nonlinear. I got confused the entire time. Now, it's shot beautifully. Don't, don't get me wrong. Christopher Nolan knows how to shoot a movie. It was very well shot. Uh, but The Dark Knight is one of my favorite movies of all time. So I'm definitely going with uh, The Dark Knight. Um, I don't think Doug Kirk's as terrible as the rest of the panel say, other than Bethany. The rest of the panel? Other than Bethany. <laughs> but, don't love me with these people with bad taste. But uh, I definitely – The Dark Knight is definitely my pick. So that would be – Three to one uh, for the Dark Knight. Uh, let's get back to the top here. We got all right, Phil, four to one, five to one, Josh, five to two, Sarah, five three, uh, six three. And that looks like it's all of our commenters here who were picking. So it looks like the Dark Knight's going to move on with a six to three vote. So that will move on to the next round. Oh, we got oh, another one for Dunkirk coming in just at the buzzer. Like that would be six to four, though. So unless Bethany can find two more people here real quick. She's I'm going to force my friends to comment that are watching right now. Right Y'all just need to throw in a Dunkirk. <laughs> two Dunkirks. Make it a tie because Dunkirk right, is better. Y'all are basing the Dark Knight as being good. Of the fact of Heath Ledger's death and his performance, mm. you're basing it off of that man's movie. performance. <laughs> that Josh man is. made that movie. If it was not for Heath Ledger, you would not have a great movie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we've made Josh and Bethany mad in the first round. So moving on is the Dark Knight. And as we have our commenters over here, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go to the second part of our bracket. We thank you all for commenting. So make sure you comment on the second part of the bracket as well. We have the number four seed, The Prestige, against the number five, The Dark Knight Rises over here. Thank you, Sarah. There is my graphic right here. So uh, I'll kick this one off for The Prestige and The Dark Knight Rises. Y'all make sure you comment over here with your favorite. Uh, as soon as I take it off, there we go. All right. So uh, The Dark Knight Rises, not a great, not the greatest comic book movie ever made, and I enjoyed it for what it was, but The Prestige is in my top 10 movies of all time. The Prestige is a glorious film with an ending that just made me go, what? So uh, The Prestige, I talk about it all the time. I love it so much. Never heard you mention it, Matt. Definitely <laughs> getting my pick here. Daniel, The Prestige or The Dark Knight Rises? I love Batman. I love The Dark Knight Rises, but I've got to go with Prestige on this one because it rocks. All right, Bethany. The, the Dark Knight Dark Rises, Rises because legally I cannot enjoy anything that Scarlett Johansson is in. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tony? Uh, I, I wasn't too impressed with The Dark Knight Rises. I think Prestige had a more interesting storyline and it had a great hook at the end, a great twist, so I liked it. All right, so we've got three for The Prestige, one for The Dark Knight Rises, and I believe we've only got two votes out here, so everybody who's been voting needs to get their votes in. Phil also going with The Prestige, so that would make it four to one. Josh with Dark Knight Rises for Tom Hardy, so that would make it four to two. 
And uh, we're just going to spitball here with the Prestige and the Dark Knight Rises till we get some more comments coming in over there. Uh, exactly, Josh. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> They're going to sit here and hey. say that the Dark Knight hey. is the great, the and then they're going to trash Dark Knight Rises. Thank you, my Jamie. First off, I didn't <laughs> trash Dark Knight Rises. I said The Prestige is the superior film. I've never heard you mention that movie in the entire time I've well, known I you, have. sir. So I don't oh. even want to hear it. <laughs> he brings it up all the time, trust me. Yeah. Oh, yes. The first D. All right, we've got some more here. It's not uh, as good as four it's two. Not as good as we were at four to two. This one here makes it four to three with Cindy. Five to three, Jamie coming in. We've got five to four. So we're getting close here. Five, four. Was that all of our commenters? Mother, I, I need a vote from you in there. <laughs> we yeah, exactly. Anne four. Hathaway is the superior actress to Scarlett Johansson. Hey, I, again, I didn't say Dark Knight Rises is a bad movie. I said The Prestige is the superior movie. Mm -mm. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. All right, we've got five to four, and I'm not seeing another comment come in. I swear to God, you are rigging the system against me, Matt. I'm, I'm waiting You're for rigging it. Comment. There's five, nobody five, here. five. Oh. Uh oh, we got yeah. five to five. Shada, oh, Josh called Shada. <laughs> Josh getting Shada in here to help out. I see you, Shada. I see you, Josh. Over the prestige, I cannot let Matt uh, win every it single is, week. The time. It is five to five, and the next person that comments is going to be the winner. So we're waiting on a comment here, five to five. So if you have not commented, a oh, bull, Phil. Bull. <laughs> Scarjo doesn't show up to work half the time. <laughs> Hey, Scarlett Johansson was good in The Prestige. She really was. When she oh. shows up to do her job, she's all right. <laughs> but she don't show up enough to do her job. Oh, Ryan, oh, Brian, you Brian, better you say. He says what he wanted to say it. He didn't say it. Oh, I've got Tab saying I agree that's, with Matt. That's, that's not. They, they don't say the title. That, that don't count, Matt. Oh. That don't count. Yeah, Ryan, you better name. get in here. The Dark Knight Rises. You haven't seen Prestige. Say the right. name. So the Prestige of the Dark Knight Rises. Whoever votes next, that's the one that's going through. So you Somebody got to blackmail the their friend into saying the Dark Knight Rises here. Come on, Tab. Uh, Prestige of the there. Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> Somebody. Tab Ryan, get in here and comment the Dark Knight Rises or we're not friends anymore. <laughs> this this is intense. I know. It's like, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> Oh, oh I... so while we wait for our next commenter, oh, yes! we got four night rises from Brian. <laughs> Brian hey. broke it, breaks the tie, and moving on will be the Bro, dark night. Tab rises. It. See, Tabas has said it before. Come on, oh, I, I did say the next commenter would get it I, before him. I agree with Matt. Uh, she didn't that say the title. That doesn't mean that she, was, she could have <laughs> oh, been this, agreeing this that Scarlett weird. Johansson was good in the movie, Tony. No. You got to specifically <laughs> say it. That's All great. righty. So, moving on on the left side. Our, our left side is going to be The Dark Knight against The Dark Knight Rises. Who We're going to come back and we're going to play the right side here in a little bit. But we're going to move on to our next topic. And our next topic is a little bit somber. Um... We're, we're just going to talk about the legacy real quick of Chadwick Boseman, uh, who passed on Saturday, uh, played roles like Jackie Robinson, um, Thurgood Thurgood Marshall. Marshall, Panther, uh, Marshall, and uh, it's escaping me. James, uh, Brown. James Brown. James Brown. Um, so we just wanted to say a few words on what uh, Chadwick Boseman and his performances meant to us. We're going to start with uh, Daniel. Daniel, just a quick few words. Well, I just, I just want to say uh, Chabot was like he was one of those generational actors, somebody that's like one of a kind. He's like an icon. I mean, I, I just I mean, I'm just like my legs are knocked out from under me because, you know, I just feel I just think about, wow, what could he have done if he would have would have been here you know, for longer? And I just, you know, everybody's just hurting right now. And I just, you know, I'm, I'm praying for his family and everybody that knew him personally, you know, so, you know. It's a loss. Right. And the fact that he, uh, he battled this for four years and did all the movies that he did, especially with the heavy load that a Marvel will put on you for a movie like Black Panther and then Infinity War and then Endgame. 
Uh, dude did such a tremendous job. Uh, and I love the uh, – one, one of my favorite things that I saw was the uh, Cleveland Browns uh, put out a tweet that uh, uh, he played a character in draft day where uh, Kevin Costner said, draft this guy no matter what. So they kind of put that tweet out and said, uh, Chadwick Bozeman, no matter what. So uh, that was really cool to see. So uh, great, talented actor, and uh, going to miss seeing his movies. Bethany? I yeah. think we talk about what he could have done, but we also have to look at what he did and how right. he embodied these iconic uh, char not char characters, T'Challa, but uh, people and the recognition that he brought to their lives and his dedication to portraying them as honestly as he could. And it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. I remember I opened Twitter as I was getting into bed Friday night and I saw the tweet from uh, the Associated Press and it was just, yeah, the line, as you can see, I'm not dead. And he really, just, he like Chadwick Boseman, uh, Ryan Coogler talked about it is he came up with a lot of the lines that were used in Black Panther, including Killmonger's, you know, kind of iconic bury me in the ocean with my ancestors because they knew death was better than bondage. And he, he understood and he just, he understood what he was working with and the talent that he had, I think. And his goal was to use all of his talent while he was here and make, I don't not necessarily make iconic movies, but leave a legacy behind for other people to follow and enlarge upon. And it is really, it's just, it. I still can't believe it. I kept wanting to just, like a Twitter hack, like it would have been the worst thing ever, but it would have been better than knowing that he was dead. But I think, you know, we need to focus on everything that he did and the attention that he brought to these people and these roles and all the things that he did for the black community and just yeah, his legacy. It's insane. All right, Tony. Uh, Casting people when they're looking for someone, they always say they're looking for that someone with it. And they don't really, they can't really explain what that it is. Yeah. It's just something you know when they're on the screen. On the screen, this dude when he was on the screen commanded it. I mean, his presence, everything about him, pulled you into the story when he was when he was on it. I can imagine people not wanting to share the limelight with him in an acting scene because he just was magnetic when you saw him acting. So. I'm like everyone else. I was floored. I mean, with as much as all the all the all the chatter and great fun and all the things that happened behind the scenes with with uh, with with how people gossip, it blows me away that this was a story that was kept so quiet. Because I feel like he kind of had to go through it by himself, and uh, yeah. he would have got a lot of love if this was something that was known. But it, but st just stunned. So. There's a WWE wrestler who, uh, Roman Reigns, who had cancer several years ago. And uh, it came back 20, late 2017, late 2018, yeah. I think. Um, and none of, no one knew. And it was just something he's like, I, I didn't want sympathy for sympathy's sake. You know, that's not who I am. I'm not someone with cancer. I am this person. And I think, you know, Chadwick, that was his personal struggle. And it broke my heart uh, all over again seeing the comment about how up until about a week or so before he died um he thought he was gonna beat cancer and get back gain his way back for black panther production starting next year and i don't i don't care like the conversation now is a lot of people are already focusing on well, what are they going to do i don't care about that i don't yeah. care what they do obviously like i care but like right now i don't because it's the fact that we lost not only an amazing actor, but we lost an amazing human being and we should be, you know, more concerned about that and, you know, finding ways to cement his legacy and celebrate his life and his many, many gifts that he gave us in the short amount of time that he had. And like Sarah's comment here, he wasn't aware. They sent uh, Kevin a text, I think it was, um, a few hours before his death, letting him know that things weren't going well. He didn't see it until after Chadwick had passed away. So no one knew. It was 
he had a great group of people around him who respected his decision to keep his battle with his health to himself and supported him. I'm undoubtedly sure about, and it's, it's really, it's just blows my mind and it, mm -hmm. what a loss, you know? All right. So we wanted to just talk about Chadwick Boseman for a few minutes and, uh, cause he had such a huge impact on, uh, acting and the movies that we love so much. So now we're going to shift focuses back into the Christopher Nolan bracket. And if it's anything like what our last one just was, we're, we're in for a big treat here. Uh, now we're moving to the right side. It's the number two seed Inception against the number seven seed Batman Begins. That's just kind of how the IMDb rankings fell. So we're going to start off with Bethany. Inception and Batman Begins. Which one's your pick? Inception. So easy. Inception. That cast, amazing the story for it, amazing. It did everything that uh, a certain movie of his didn't. And that certain movie is not Dunkirk, you three, <laughs> and you commenters. Um, yeah, no, you can't go wrong with Inception. I just, it, like, Batman Begins is like the redheaded stepchild of Nolan's Batman trilogy. Like, everyone kind of forgets that it exists almost because it's, I don't know, it's just not as popular as the other two. And, but Inception is like a cultural icon of a movie uh, of, uh, you know, the last decade or so. Like, I remember everyone talking about, like, what did the ending mean and everything. So, <laughs> all right. Like in Daniel, Inception. Inception or Batman Begins? Okay. Choose well, wisely. I, yeah, I was going to say, I love Batman Begins. It's like one of my favorite Batman movies because I love that story arc with Quan John Jin or. What's his face? Liam Neeson? <laughs> you talking about Liam Neeson? Kwan John Jin? You, you Kwan Kwan Jin? Jin? Raz Al Ghul? Raz Al Ghul, yeah. yeah. I, Liam love Neeson. That. I love that story. I think it's great. But you know what? Nothing, It. I mean, none of these, I mean, excuse me, uh, Inception is awesome. I mean, you know, you can't beat it. The story, the, the I mean, you know, it just, it, it slays Batman again. So, yeah, Inception. Uh, I love Batman Begins. Uh, it's my second favorite in the trilogy. Uh, I love the storytelling with Liam Neeson and him training and coming back. I uh, didn't really care much for the love story with Katie Holmes in that one. I thought Maggie Gyllenhaal did a better job in uh, The Dark Knight uh, as Rachel. But I, I really enjoy Batman Begins. With that said, Inception is just amazing. Uh, I love everything about Inception, right from the cast to the storytelling to the way he weaves you in and out of dreams. <laughs> Um, it's it's got Leo DiCaprio and Joseph Gordon Levitt, so uh, those two automatically get my pick. So I'm going Inception, Tony. You forgot Tom Hardy in there, sir, and Killian Murphy. Yeah, uh, for me, easily Inception. Um, they had at the time some pretty amazing special effects that you see now a lot in some of the new Marvel stuff, but back then it was pretty groundbreaking. The effects that they had in it, such mm -hmm. a complex storyline, such a con complex idea to kind of show how and it, and it and I I locked into it when I was watching it understood it all the way through and it had me to the very end of watching that piece you know it's like such a great great movie for me so it's one of my top three maybe top five movies of all time so easily inception it was so good I walked right out of the theater jumped in my car and opened up my phone to try and find the book it was based on because I was like, man, if the movie, yeah. good, the book's going to be amazing. And then to find out it was just from the mind of, of him. He just, it was a story he came up with. And it was never even a book. I was even more blown away. So Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was four of us for Inception. Uh, looking at the comments, it looks a little bit different here. Uh, that'd be four to one. Phil with Batman Begins. Brian picking Batman Begins. So that would be four to two. Sarah with Inception. So five to two. Ah, uh, and Sarah also loves Quan John Jin. Ah, <laughs> uh, Brian also said Killian Murphy was perfect to Scarecrow. We Jamie talked about with, that last week. Jamie with the Batman Begins, so that's five to three. Uh, Roger. Josh, not really a fan of either, but Inception loses for introducing <laughs> sound. All right, so that's another one for Batman Begins. Uh, your mom says Batman Begins, and mm -hmm. Shayna says Batman Begins. Oh boy. 
Uh, I'm not on, seeing another comment here. It looks like we had everybody who was a commenter comment, and I don't want to be accused of trying to boost Inception from the commenters here. <laughs> so uh, going once. But Josh bumping it because of the, the soundtrack. Come on. Yeah. Man. Twice. Yeah. Gone. Inception loses to Batman Begins. Dang. We have Stop. all three Dark Knight trilogy movies moving on to the final four. And we still have uh, – that's what you get for picking the Dark Knight Rises over the It really doesn't matter to me because I'm not a huge – Huge, huge movie. So I was just like, eh, <laughs> for me. But uh, Dark Knight Rises is still better than the Prestige, Phil. I did not see that one coming. All right, we're gonna do. Is the that last as shocking one. As, as the other week when Bridesmaids won, though? Oh boy, uh, I definitely didn't see Inception losing. So that moves all three uh, Batman movies now are in the final four, and we're about to find out what our fourth movie is when we go the three seed Interstellar against the six seed Memento. We're going to start with Tony, Memento, Interstellar. What do you got? I didn't see Memento. That's a little far back for me on the train, but I enjoyed Interstellar. And you guys have thoroughly told me all about Memento. And it's another one of Nolan's I love to tell things in reverse storyline. Uh, so for me, I love the hook that Interstellar had. I love the characters. I love the reveal of how he went through time. It, it got a little crazy at the end, I think, for some people, but... I'm going to go with Interstellar. All right, Tony's going Interstellar. Daniel, Interstellar or Memento? I can't believe – I mean, it's hard, it's hard for – I'm just still trying to wrap my mind around, like, how all three Batman movies are in this bracket. <laughs> like, surviving, oh, my God. Well, you know, that's okay. But uh, I, I was around when Memento came out. I went to the theater. I had my mind blown. I was just, like in, – in, like, Beside myself, because of this amazing movie, I can't get over the fact how awesome Memento is. I'm choosing Memento for this choice. All right, Bethany, let's see. If, have you seen Interstellar and Memento? I figure Interstellar, but have you seen Memento? That's rude. Uh huh. That's have rude. You? Have you? Memento. I like a I Mentos. pick Memento. I like Memento. I like Mentos. I like Mentos. I meant to. I wait for you to say Mentos. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Mentos. No, Men Memento. I enjoy Memento. <laughs> I do not like, uh, like. Okay, so I like Star Wars. I hate like Gravity or Interstellar things like that. Oh. Space movies like that make me. They jump my anxiety, just like uh, ocean movies do. I can I can deal with Titanic, but. Um, you give me something where people are stranded in the middle of the ocean or you're stranded in space, mm -hmm, I can't deal with it. It's uh, it, it's the vastness of it that bothers me. And also, I just couldn't get into Interstellar. Yeah. I, yeah, I, uh, I forgot Matt Damon blows up in that movie. My friend <laughs> showed me. He was like, yeah, Matt Damon. I was like, are you sure you're talking about the, the Mars movie? Yeah. And um, he's like, no, he's in Interstellar. And then they show him blow up. And I was like, oh, he is there. <laughs> yes. I like gravity. Um, that was a good flick. That, I like it. I, I didn't. I didn't care much for Interstellar at all, to be honest. Um, I, it was the follow up from Inception. I was really super hyped about it. I just, I didn't like it at all. Uh, it was slow moving. Uh, the twist they pull at the end was almost as bad as what we're going to get to here soon. Uh, Interstellar was a bad movie. Memento is an amazing movie one of nolan's best uh, i love the way that he told the story in that love the black and white that they use throughout uh guy pierce is really great carrie and moss is great i and uh the other one from the matrix his name's escaping me uh cypher in the matrix uh, i love every mom? uh love uh it's something uh, his real name is like joe pantanello or something like that yeah he's great um, but uh, I loved everything about Memento. Memento is great. So that's going to be my pick. So that's three to one for Memento, I believe. Uh, let's see if I get back to the top. We got Brian with Interstellar. So that's three to two. Phil with Memento. That's four to two. Josh with Interstellar. Uh, so four to three. It looks like we've got Sarah's four to four. Uh, Jamie with Interstellar. So that's four to five for Interstellar. 
Uh, Josh, to not- point, the robots in that movie are very cute. <laughs> I do love the robots in that movie. They were but-, a weird, but I'm not seeing another comment. So it looks like it's going to be four to five with Interstellar moving on. And even Shayna just with capsizing it right there at the end with Interstellar. So that makes your Christopher Nolan movie bracket. The Dark Knight against The Dark Knight Rises and Batman Begins against Interstellar. Um, I must say I am very shocked. I didn't see it going this way uh, <laughs> at all. Uh, so much so that I didn't even put those graphics in here. You all just, <laughs> just shocked me. You really did. Uh, I definitely didn't think Inception was losing. <laughs> um, so with that said, before we get into our final topic, we'll get this narrowed down to the top two for the best Christopher Nolan. So let's go ahead and do that. Y'all get your commenting ready over there because according to the fans, which I think I did make this one, we've got the Dark Knight against the Dark Knight Rises. Uh, I'll go first. It's the Dark Knight. Uh, it's it's just it's got the better villain, uh, the better performances, the better story. Uh, everything flows better. Uh, Bruce, I, I love Chris. Uh, why is his name escaping? Heath Ledger. No, oh Heath Ledger too. Uh, Christian Bale. I yeah. wouldn't say Chris Ledger or something like that. Christian mm-hmm. Bale is probably uh, he's a good Batman. I love him as Batman. He's my favorite Bruce Wayne. He's a very good Bruce Wayne. Uh, he's got that arrogant cockiness to him uh, when they go out. Uh, Aaron Eckhart was great as Two Face in this. Uh, it's just much more memorable to me than The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises has <laughs> Tom Hardy is good. But then you got to remember, Marion Cotillard was wasted in that movie. Uh, her death is probably the worst movie death I've ever seen, where she just goes and just dies. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the worst ever. Um, and her being the secret villain, that wasn't really great for me. Uh, but Anne Hathaway, great. Uh, but The Dark Knight seals it for me. I, I already talked way too long. It's The Dark Knight. Tony? Why so serious? The Dark Knight, easy. All right, Daniel. Yeah, nobody beats. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I love uh, Ledger's Joker second to uh, what's his face? I, I, I can't even think of that name. Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson or uh, Joaquin Phoenix? Joaquin Phoenix. But to me, Joaquin Phoenix is the best Joker. Se- uh, second would be Ledger for me. Uh, and that's why The Dark Knight is the best Batman movie. All right, Bethany. Dark Knight Rises. All right. I just so. I think uh, it's more memorable than the other one because the most memorable thing about the Dark Knight is Heath Ledger, mm-hmm. Aaron Eckhart kind of, but Heath Ledger is the most memorable thing about that. Whereas I think you have a ton of really great performances in the Dark Knight Rises between Anne Hathaway and Tom Hardy and Christian Bale. So, all right, so we've got three for the Dark Knight, one for the Dark Knight Rises. Uh, looking over here, we've got. Uh, Brian with The Dark Knight, Sarah with The Dark Knight, Shana <laughs> with The Dark Knight, and looks like Josh is going to go with The Dark Knight Rises. Holding it down, Josh. He's We're holding so it down. <laughs> bitter about Dunkirk. So moving on in the left side of the bracket is going to be The Dark Knight. So The Dark Knight will, as the one seed, move on in the left side. So now on the right side, we've got number three, Interstellar, against number seven, Batman Begins. So Interstellar, Batman Begins. Bethany, which one are you going with? Batman Begins because I don't like the space movie. <laughs> Tony? Interstellar because I do like space movies. <laughs> I said, I didn't say, I said I don't like the space movie. All right. Uh, Daniel, Batman Begins, Interstellar. Yeah, I got tripped up on the end of Interstellar. I love Interstellar. I love space. I love sci-fi. But the end just lost me. I was in there going, my God, what are they doing? So I'm going to have to go with the Batman movie. That sounds uh, like this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I'm going to go with uh, with Batman Begins also. Just because, I, like I said, I love Batman Begins. It's my sec- second favorite in the whole trilogy. And uh, uh all the performances, everything. I just did not like Interstellar. I just didn't. Um, so Batman Begins for me. So that was uh, three, I believe, for Batman Begins. One for Interstellar from Tony. So we're going to take a look here. You all get those comments in here. We've got, if I can get here, 
Jamie with Interstellar. We've got Sarah with Interstellar. We've got Brian with Batman Begins, and he says sorry to Interstellar. Uh, we've got Josh with Interstellar uh, for the score. Four to uh, four. Chain bookshelf. So we've got four to four. And Cindy coming in with Batman. We've got Shana coming back in with Interstellar. So we are tied at five apiece. And uh, I don't know if Phil has logged out because these made it into the finals here. Uh, let's see if we can try to find one more comment uh, between Interstellar Batman Begins, somebody who has not commented yet. Darby, log in. Log in and vote Batman, Darby. <laughs> Darby might be doing a fantasy football draft at the moment. Uh, it's oh, what so a nerd. Interstellar, Batman Begins. I don't see another comment coming in, so there's only one way to break tiebreakers, and it's the way I've always broken tiebreakers in movie brackets, so people can't say I'm just cheating. Uh, the way that you break every movie bracket is it goes to the higher seed, ladies and gentlemen. That's what happens. So without another vote coming in, your higher seed in this ranking between Batman Begins and Interstellar is Interstellar as the three seed. So Interstellar will move on because that's the way you break movie brackets. So your final is going to be the Dark Knight against Interstellar. And I must say, Congrats to you, commenters, because I did not see that coming at all. Uh, <laughs> Dark Knight, yes, I didn't see Interstellar making it that far, but I'm happy that you guys enjoyed it. So before we get into the finals of The Dark Knight and Interstellar, we're going to go into our final topic here. And our final topic, y'all, we saw Tenet, the latest from Christopher Nolan. It's the whole reason we're doing the Christopher Nolan uh, bracket. It was great to get back into the movie theaters. That's why we went to go see it. And we're going to start with Tony. Tony, tell us about Tenet. And don't worry, we're not going to spoil it for you guys. We're just giving you our honest opinion of the film. So you don't have to put in your muffs or anything. We're not going to spoil nothing. Tony. I was so excited to get back to the movies. I was I got my big thing of popcorn. I got my drink. We're in these fancy chairs. They they. They, they slot up so you can sit back. It was amazing. Everything was just right. And then the show started, and it went downhill from there. I mean, it's like the storytelling in this. So I thought Inception was a perfect way to tell a complicated concept. If you thought, if you thought Inception was complicated, this is like trigonometry combined with quantum physics. <laughs> I mean, to follow this storyline with the way they do their backwards concept defies understanding. I cannot believe that they, they screened this with test screenings because there's no way they had a hundred people screen this and 99 of them didn't go, what? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I think they committed to such a complicated shooting concept that by the time they were they're actually editing this and running through test screenings, they couldn't go backwards because of the way the effects and stuff were done. So it easily gets so close to being as bad as Dunkirk. It's not quite as bad as Dunkirk, but it <laughs> is it's gonna go down. I honestly think this is gonna be detrimental to his career because I think he got to the point where he was so good and so bankable, they were like, Okay, whatever, man, just do your thing. And they just kind of gave him free reign to kind of Kind of, I because I can see him trying to pitch this concept to somebody that has the money to back, it and they're like, "Uh, whatever you say, I know you got this." And now they're gonna go, "Okay, he didn't have this because the story to me, if you throw away the the backward concept, and I don't want to go too much in to mess it up for the spoiling, and just had the story, the story to me was just just wasn't that interesting. So it has the cool effects and it has the this this thing that I'm not gonna give away, but. When you come back and look at it, it just wasn't interesting. So I was very disappointed. Daniel? Oh, my God. I, I don't know what to say other than I'm just disappointed. Like, I, I like I left, and I was almost wanted to cry. I mean, I don't know if that makes any sense, but, like, the movie that has hyped this entire year, I have been sitting around for months just, like, beside myself going, my God, I can't wait to see this movie. And then we see it, and then – I, I mean, I can't even tell you how disappointed I am. I mean, I wanted this to be so good. It was supposed to be so good. Ah, like, but I mean, 
I would, you know, when you see it and you want to, and maybe we can do a show where we actually talk about some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to know what you think about it, but like some of the stuff in it. Yeah. Amazing. Cool concept. Neat stuff. Oh my God. Mind blowing. But when you see it, you're going to, you're going to know what exactly what we're talking about. And I can tell you this, I don't go to sleep during movies that often, but I I went to sleep last the, during this one for like I I, Dave, talk, I don't think you sleep enough because I have several <laughs> movies you've fallen asleep in now. I got so confused. I mean, I just I literally went to sleep, woke up, got back in it. It was still doing the same stuff, and then I went to sleep again. It was a two sleeper <laughs> for me. Like I slept twice, and I mean I only slept for a little bit, but you know. But I was just like so put off. I was just like, oh, I mean, I hurt in my chest and in my brain for this movie because I wanted it to be great. I'm sorry. That's all I can say. Hey, you Matt. had the right idea. I wish I'd have fallen asleep. <laughs> all right, Bethany, Matt. No, Matt. I want to hear you. Oh, you want to hear? Yeah. All right. So, uh, honestly, if we had reviewed this the second I walked out of the theater, it would have a much worse rating than what I'm about to review for you. Uh, I was able to sleep on it. Uh, I talked to my brother about it. Uh, we went through the movie together because he had seen it too. Um, it, it It's growing on me a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's – definitely don't think it's Christopher Nolan's worst movie. Um, and I, like I said, I, I'm not a fan of Dunkirk or Interstellar. I, I'd put it above those two for sure. Um, here's the thing. Here's the thing about the movie, and I'm not going to spoil anything for you. The first 45 minutes of the movie is – some of the most confusing why type moments I've ever had watching a movie. And I thought to myself, oh, well, you know, I guess it all makes sense at the end. But then when I got to the end, I was like, oh, boy, that first 45 minutes did not do anything for this movie whatsoever. Um, it, it felt like the first 45 minutes was a three-hour movie cut into 45 minutes. And you'll see what I'm talking about when you see it. Um I'm a pretty I sharp guy. That. I'm a pretty sharp guy when it comes to movies. So I was trying to catch on to what was going on. Uh, it did get predictable in moments. Uh, I'm not saying that's bad because not everybody should just hold their cards all the way to the chest. Uh, but it did get predictable at moments. I'm not going to drag it down for that. Uh, but it definitely it, it was very confusing at times. Uh, and I think it lacked what Inception had with a character like an Ellen Page where she came in and they could explain to her what they were doing, which it also explained to the audience. Here, Christopher Nolan's like, I got a smart audience. They're going to understand everything I'm saying. And I was like, no, I didn't. I didn't understand everything you were saying there, Chris. Um, and like Tony said, the old, if you took out all the gimmicks that they put into the movie because it's full of gimmicks and you just looked at the story as a whole, it's not a good story. The, it's not a story where if you said, hey, I've got this movie and this is what's going to happen, I'd be like, I guess some people might like that movie. I, it not, I'm not one of them. So the overall goal of the movie was not great to me. It just had a lot of good gimmicks. Uh, with that said, I love the characters. The characters were great. Uh, Robert Pattinson is always amazing. Uh, John David Washington was great as the lead. Uh, you believed him everywhere you where you followed him. Uh, yeah. Elizabeth uh, Debicki, great as the female lead in this. Kenneth Branagh playing a different kind of role than what Kenneth Branagh usually plays. Uh, the characters were great. This, it's just the story for me just didn't do it. Um, but I, I, I've, I've slept on it, and I don't give it a worse rating than what I first had. But, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely not top-notch Nolan for me. Bethany? So I went into this with the same mentality I had with Rise of Skywalker. Um I knew it wasn't going to be as good as everyone was hyping it up to be. Like, Rise of Skywalker, I was ready to be disappointed with that movie, and I ended up enjoying it the most out of all four of us when we saw it last year. And that's how I felt about Tenet, was um, it's, it, I didn't have a hard time following it. I, don't, I didn't mind the nonlinear um, format of it. There's some things like that I've, some of the scenes I've been thinking of where I was like, I don't think he followed his own movie canon though as he did it. I was like, you have a continuity error, error there for a good 45 to an hour minute of your movie. Uh, I do agree with Matt about the first 45 minutes where they just condensed it because I mean 
they're here and then they're here and then they're here and there's like there's nothing to sh like they're just here in this setting and then there's like instead of having like this conversation on a flight or something like that it's just like we are randomly in these cities and it's like there's a lot of stuff i think that got ended up on the cutting room floor yeah, um <laughs> i well like i said i didn't have a uh, a hard time following the plot. I didn't, this wasn't a movie I was super interested in seeing anyways because none of the trailers got my attention until the last official trailer came out. And I was like, oh, okay, I kind of understand what this movie's about now. And, but even then I was just like, eh. I went to see this movie entirely for two people, which was Aaron Taylor Johnson and Elizabeth Debicki. And I had to wait like an hour and a half for Aaron Taylor Johnson to show up, but he did. And so I enjoyed that part and I enjoy anything Elizabeth Debicki does at any given moment. She is an astounding actress and I love how she towers over every single man that she is around on set. <laughs> um, but you know, like Matt also said, the, the cast is the best part of the movie. Everyone's character is believable in that role. Like, you don't, you're not looking at them as like, oh, that's Kenneth Branagh playing a character. That's like, that is this really scary Russian dude. Everything, you know, you, you, everybody embodies their role really well. And I think they did a really good job with it. Um, but one thing I like, so I didn't really have a problem with this movie, but one thing I did read was again that Robert Pattinson, Elizabeth Debicki, and uh, John David Washington were only allowed to read the script while they were locked in a room. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of these directors doing this or with having multiple scripts. Like, get over yourself. Your idea isn't that fantastic. You're not reinventing the wheel because every single movie that they've done that for recently, Infinity War, Endgame, Tenet, the movies are good. They're cool. They're neat. But your movie is not so amazingly mind-blowing that you deserve to lock your cast in a room to read the script or only give them certain pages of the script. Like Michael Caine only had this much of the script and he was there for one day to shoot his scene and that was it. No, if you don't want spoilers to get leaked, like I understand, but at the same time, how pretentious of a director are you to sit there and be like, I don't want anyone to have any understanding of what my movie's about. So I'm going <laughs> to lock my actors in a room and they are like being watched by snipers at all times to make sure they don't spoil anything. Like get over yourself. All well, right. I will say. I will say. Oh, I just yeah. got to say lock, locking them in the room and making sure nobody knew what was going on. I, I would say it worked. I would say Elizabeth Debicki was the standout in this yes. movie for me. Though. I mean, she she drives the plot through, and she you don't have a plot without her, honestly, because otherwise they can't accomplish anything that they're trying to do. So, uh, and she does such a great job. I mean, you're you're drawn into her character. So I, I was really impressed with that. But there's some other technical issues with this. There were some sound issues. Oh yeah, music levels versus dialogue. That were on that they were muted and hard to understand. They were yeah. a lot of the time, so you can't really pick up any visual cues what they just said. So that to me was some some other issues I had. Uh, yeah, but. and that was that's one of the things about uh, I think it was a critic comment was when you shoot in um, thirty five millimeter film, there the sound doesn't always transfer over very well, and then when you have your score going or your background noise. It get it become things get lost and it gets really hard to hear and that was like a complaint like my friend and I had when we were watching the movie we we're just like what is saying like I'm having to sit there I can't even look at the screen I'm having to like look like do this whole thing where you, like you turn your ear to the screen like you can hear it better that way so I'm like staring um, into like the void over here and like trying to focus really hard on the words and it didn't always work. Daniel, I want to say this. I mean, it, as far as like a movie goes, like you, there just, to me, there's different ways to measure success. And and I think we had the conversation today. You know, if, if a movie is something you talk about for like a week, 
or two weeks, you know, is it a winner at that point? I mean, you may have make it say no, but you know what? Today, that's what we talked about at lunch. We were like going through this thing and like busting it out and breaking down scenes and stuff. You know, in a way, the movie is in a way a genius movie because it captured our imagination and it made us talk about it on a level that we probably wouldn't have done if it had been a decent. But we, but we weren't saying good things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. It stayed in our minds though, and it made you us know, talk. If you're, if you're sitting there, you're, if you're having to talk out the movie and to understand yeah. what happened, I think that is a failure of the director and his script at a certain point. You know, like yeah, I like the like movie. the thing with Inception because it was a wonky, non-linear timeline. You're like, okay, but everyone pretty much was able to figure it out. But with Tenet. And like I said, I enjoyed the movie. I didn't have a problem following it. But there's some stuff where he's not following his own, the the laws of the movie. It's like if you're Adam, like there's one thing they say, like if your atoms interact, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that means, if you haven't seen the movie, if your atoms interact, then, <laughs> but we see atoms interact and <laughs> nope. So I don't, I don't know what happened there. Like, I, if you're going to make up laws and rules, you have to follow the laws and rules. Otherwise, why should we care about anything that you've done? All right, Tony, why don't you give us your movie rounders rating out of five? I judge just the how successful a movie is on based on if I want to go back and see it again. I call it a twofer. Is it a twofer? Do I want to go see this? Well, I pay my money again to go watch this. And the problem is, I think he made this where you have to go watch it again to figure it out more to and, and we followed the the concept but scene to scene it didn't always make sense for one of the some of the things you're saying yeah and there and it some, doesn't always flow again with like the way they jump cut scenes almost there are some epic ending scenes or beginning scenes depending on how you want to look at it that have lots of people on the screen and and there's some color coding that goes into play and you can't really tell from the scale of the shots what is what and I mean, it's visually stunning, but it's almost like you don't really know. It just, I feel like you have to see it again to even start to appreciate it. Like he said, I've slept on it and I've tried to really think about it. Maybe it's not, but I don't even want to go see it again. It, it doesn't even interest me to even do the extra effort to go see it. Because like, if you're going to make me work that hard just to even keep up with it, it doesn't interest me. So for me, I don't know what we judged. Uh, what was the movie? I don't know what we Bill did. and Ted. <laughs> no, it's definitely below Bill and Ted. I was going to say Dunkirk. I don't know what I judged Dunkirk, but it's about 0. 0.1 above that. We'll have to go back and see what I reviewed that for, but I'm going to call it a, a two tops. All right, Daniel. All right. I'm just going to flat out, lay it out here. This movie was stupid and a waste of time. <laughs> I give it a one. A one. There we go. Bethany, what yeah. do you give it? Um, based off cinematography, actor performances, I'll give it uh, about a 2.3 or so, maybe a 2.5. Um, but it's, again, that's all up to the acting, you know, every actor in that movie turned in a stellar performance that was super believable. But when it comes to the plot and the way the plot is handled and the fact that the director can't follow his own rules um throughout his movie that that really takes away from the experience also i don't think like i don't even really remember the soundtrack too much from this or anything like that um so just, just a lot of that. um you know there's things about it i enjoyed i I'll, i'm gonna watch it again 100 percent just because I did enjoy it and I want to see if I actually did enjoy it or if I was just like gaslighting myself to enjoy it because I liked some of the actors and actresses that were in it. And so I'll come back to this in a few weeks, I think. Um, or like at least update wise, hopefully I'll watch it before then. But yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a 2.3. I, I can't give it the two and a half. I just feel like it, it didn't quite earn the half point. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a two myself, a two out of five. Uh, like I said, I, I it, it would have had like a a point five had I reviewed it when I came out of the theater. Uh, it's slowly yeah, I getting how better bad for you guys were. Yeah, it's slowly getting better for me, so I'll give it a two out of five. Um, 
So, yeah, everybody go see it because everybody's opinion, obviously, from this bracket we just did. Uh, Y'all have much different opinions than uh, some of us do. So that's our review of Tenet. Uh, We've run 10 minutes over time that we usually do here. So uh, we're just going to end it right there with Tenet, y'all. I think for our next next week, next Thursday, we're going to do just another fan question night because that seemed to go over very well. We're just going to have you guys ask the questions throughout the night. Uh, whatever you want to ask, uh, new movies, old movies, uh, we'll, we'll have fun with it. And uh, hopefully all, all of us will be here to answer those questions. We thank you for watching tonight. We did Giving us all your comments. What's did that? Finish, did we finish our bracket? We didn't finish the bracket. Oh, I forgot. We didn't even finish the bracket. It's a, pretty <laughs> given. It's a given anyway. So. I, I, I thought we had already picked the winner here. It is the Dark Knight against Interstellar. Um, real right. quick. Dark Knight. Dark Knight is. Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Uh, Tony, Daniel, Dark Knight. Dark Knight. All right. So the four of us are Dark Knight. We'll see if any of uh, any of your comments come in between the Dark Knight and Interstellar. Y'all surprised us before. So we'll see if you guys come in with some Interstellar. And uh, next that, week, we're just doing fan movie stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to do fan questions. Uh, if you want to hear about Westerns that everybody likes, then ask, ask it at that time. Yeah. And force me to answer a question about Westerns. Uh, as you can see, we've got Dark Knights coming in. Dark Knight. Uh, so it looks like the Dark Knight is just going to win the uh, best Christopher Nolan bracket, which I figured would. Uh, but you all had a lot of upsets in there. It was a, it was an intense vote, and I thank you all for voting on that. So, yes, next week, fan questions only. Uh, we'll throw in, uh, if you guys want to throw in some on uh, the Facebook posts that we make, that way we can start with some questions, and then throughout the comments we'll do it. So we is thank you really- all. What's that? Timothy Chalamet really in that movie? I'm sure he's in there somewhere. Everybody seemed to have made a cameo in there at some point. (laughs) Um, But we thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed our reviews uh, next week. Fan questions night. We're movie rounders. Thank you guys for watching and have yourselves a good night.